Welcome to the Echo Driving School channel. It's been a long time since I made a video. Uh, very busy, but things naturally have slowed down with the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. And I decided to do this video to help out when life does become normal again and driving lessons will start again. And naturally, a lot of learners will want to learn Hopefully, we can get all back to normal in the summer months and I'm sure uh, many of you will be actually helping out the driving instructors out there by wanting to learn in the summer. So today I'm going to be talking about the first lesson that you can expect your driving instructor to take you to a small uh, quiet road where they will do the controls lesson, talk about the various pedals that you'll be dealing with. Now I'm going to be talking about a manual car and this is also for my students who really struggle in the first uh, lesson where they are not really aware of what the pedals do, where they are. And this lesson, you know, within the natural setting can take a long time. So if you can actually look at this video prior to your lesson, then believe me, your instructor will be very impressed with the knowledge that you have acquired through this video. Uh, and that is the aim of today. So without further ado, let's start the lesson. So in your lesson, the first thing that your driving instructor will want to do is check your driving license. Without a provisional driving license, you cannot learn how to drive. So make sure that you go to the post office or do it online and you have that all ready beforehand. Now, once he's checked your driving license, they will check to see your eyesight. Now you should be able to see a number plate from 20.5 meters. Uh, and it's a good idea that if you are struggling with your eyesight to get it checked with a reputable company um, so that you can see a number plate because in terms of your driving test again these are the two things that will happen uh, and if you cannot see a number plate uh, and believe me this has happened before if you cannot see a number plate then your test will not go ahead now <clears throat> once that has been done uh, your instructor will guide you onto the driver's side and show you uh, the various things that you need to do to adjust your car seats, how to put your seat belt on, and we'll talk about the three pedals that you have to deal with, the gears, talk about where your indicators are, how to adjust your mirrors, and this is what we're gonna do uh, in a moment. Once you get onto the driver's side, the first thing you want to do is check that your seating position is adjusted so that you may reach your pedals correctly. Now, to identify the pedals, let's briefly talk about what each one is. So, I'm just going down and showing you the three pedals you have. The easy way to remember is the three alphabet letters, A, B, and C. Now, the one on the right, that is the accelerator. The one in the middle, that's the brake. And the left pedal is called the clutch. Now remember, the left foot is the only foot that should be applying the clutch. And the right foot, you will swivel your feet to use the accelerator which instructors also call the gas or the brake which i'll come back to later on now moving back once you've actually adjusted your seat you want to put your seat belt on adjust your headrest now when you adjust your headrest it should be aligned with your air lobes or your eye line once you have done that you will Confirm with your driving instructor and he will confirm with you to see if there is 
a slight bend in your knee so that you are reaching the pedals without overstretching. Now, once that is done, you will adjust your center mirror. Now in your center mirror, there is no right or wrong, but as a general guide, you wanna make sure that you can see as much of the back as possible and a little bit of your face. Now I usually say the left eye, the left part of your face should be visible within the mirror. Now, once you have done that, you would adjust your right mirror. Now, once you adjust your right mirror, you should be able to see your back door handle, if you have one, back of the car, a little bit of the road, and then you will adjust your left mirror. Now, there's no right or wrong in terms of what you do first, but again, the same thing, adjust your left mirror, and then make sure that you can see as much of the back as possible. Now, one theoretical question that I usually ask my students is what is the difference between the centre mirror glass that's used and the side mirrors? Now, the simple answer is that the side mirror, they use convex mirrors. So they make things look further away than they truly are. And then if you look at the centre mirror, they will show you the natural real life image. Now, why is that important to understand? Because when you do check your side mirror to see if anything's coming on your side, always take into account that the image that you're seeing is slightly distorted and it's not the real life distance. So that is the reasons why you actually need to understand that. Now, once you have adjusted all your mirrors and you're into a comfortable seating position, and you have your seat belt on. The next thing is how to start your car and what are the two safety checks that one should do. So the first thing is you want to make sure that your obviously door is shut properly and then you want to check that your handbrake is on. Now this handbrake is the traditional one. In another car, like some of the German cars, they might be on your feet uh, you know near your um, clutch pedal so you know ask your driving instructor if it's any very if it's any different from what I'm showing you then we move on to once you've checked your handbrake is on then you make sure that you check that your gear stick is in neutral and how you can check is in neutral if you move your hands like I'm doing and it will show you that it is in the middle position which we call the neutral position. And I'm just focusing on this to show you the middle position. In another car, it will be slightly different. So once you have done the above, you are ready to start the car. Now, the first thing that you wanna do in terms of starting the car is you turn your key to the right position until all the lights come on. Once the lights are on, that's called your ignition. That will allow you to close your window, turn the radio on, and so forth. If you turn your key once more, that is where the car will start. Now, it's very important that you start your car in neutral, because if you start the car in gear, the car may jump forward. And again, some instructors do like to show what the effects of that are. Now, once you have started your car, your instructor will proceed with the lesson and will demonstrate or tell you about how to position your feet for those three pedals that I've spoken about before. So one of the questions that I usually start off with, because this is a manual car and the most important pedal in a manual car is the clutch. So I, so I usually say, what are the three purpose of the clutch? Now, the first purpose of the clutch is to allow you to change gears. The second purpose of the clutch is it allows you to move off when you are in gear. Now, the final one, the purpose of the clutch is it allows you to stop in gear whenever you have to stop. Now, that could be at a red light, that could be at a junction, so always remember that if you are not doing the three purpose of the clutch, 
your feet should not be over the clutch it should not be under the clutch it should just be to the side resting ready to engage whenever you need it then we move on to the middle pedal that is the brake pedal and then you have the gas pedal now the way you want to position your feet you want to make sure that it's in the middle position and you're swiveling your feet to the right to the gas or to the middle pedal to the brake now usually i give people a idea of how much pressure they should apply at those two pedals because those two pedals are very very sensitive so i usually say i would like you to break thickness of a pound coin and you can imagine take a pound coin and see how thick it is now whenever the instructor asks you to press the gas you want to press it to the thickness of a pound coin and try and hold it at that level same with the braking if you brake too hard you will make the car stopped abruptly therefore it will not be a smooth braking so always start off by covering your brakes and pressing the brakes thickness of a pound coin now moving on we'll be talking about the various terminologies that we as instructors use some of them you might be aware some of them you may not be so one of the words is cover your brakes so i just want to demonstrate if i move down so you can see my feet so whenever I say cover the brakes, all I want you to do is gently touch it. That's about a pound coin. If you move over to the gas, that's roughly about a pound coin on the gas. Moving on, your instructor might also ask you to, or will show you how to hold your gear stick. Now, whenever you hold your gear stick make sure you cover your gear stick and you move your palm to the left and you push it straight ahead and that's usually first gear as you will see here and then when you want to do second gear you keep the push and you move it to second gear like that and that's how you want to obviously change gears uh, now changing gears is for another lesson uh, unless you are very good it's very unlikely that you'll be doing gear changes on your first lesson unless it's a two hour lesson. Uh, it depends. Some instructors like to do one hour, some do two. Um, personally, I don't think um, there is a right or wrong. It's just what the instructor is comfortable doing. OK, so we're going to be talking about how to do the steering wheel. Uh, this method is called the pull push technique. Uh, now, this is taught mainly for novices who are actually learning how to drive from the beginning. And uh, a lot of um, foreign drivers who can obviously drive competently, it's not really necessary for you to learn this technique, um, as so long as you can show a competency in how to steer so that you don't oversteer or understeer. So crossing your hands is not a serious fault, but this is the method that we are to uh, told to teach. Um, this method is called the uh, pull and push technique. So I'll just demonstrate and I want you to practice this at home with a dinner plate or frisbee or anything with a round circumference. Um, now when you're actually doing, we're going to be talking about a full lock on either side. So we'll start off with the right side and then we'll move over to how to do uh, the left side and straighten up the steering wheel. So when you want to steer to the right, make sure you look where you want to steer and don't look at your steering wheel. That's uh, a key uh, factor that most learners do. They try and watch their hands as opposed to um, just thinking about looking in the direction of travel. So that being said, whenever you want to steer right, you grab the steering wheel firmly with your right uh, hand and then your left hand should be loose and your right hand will pull the steering wheel and drag it all the way to six o'clock. Now, note what my left hand did. So I'll show it again. So my right hand pulled the steering wheel from 12 to six and my left hand 
follow that down to six, ready to assist. Once I've actually gone to six o'clock, I now grab the steering wheel firm with my left hand and my right hand is going to be nice and loose and my left hand pushes the steering wheel up following all the way to 12 o'clock and my right hand followed and then it's the same thing again my right hand is now fully engaged my left hand is nice and light and my right hand pulls the steering wheel and my left hand again is ready now I pass it to my left hand and my right hand is following and this is why it's called the pull and push technique now I'm going to correct my steering wheel so my left hand is going to pull the steering wheel my right hand goes down and then my right hand pushes the steering wheel up and my left hand follows up to 12 o'clock then my left hand pulls the steering wheel down my right hand follows and then my right hand pushes up the steering wheel to 12 and my left hand follows to 12 my left hand now pulls it down my right hand follows down my right hand pushes up my left hand follows and this is the pull and push technique now whenever you want to correct your steering wheel slightly quicker we say briskly straighten up your steering so that's all it means is slightly faster until you can straighten up your steering wheel so do get practicing at, uh, at home um, remember the quicker you learn how to steer the easier it is for your instructor to move on to different topics because we do not have a steering wheel on our side and if you cannot steer and I have taught people who really struggle with the steering wheel and you know it's taken them almost seven eight hours just to learn steering and all of that can be uh, learned at home just by practicing uh, if you do have a car or you've got a friend or family or you know your parents ask their permission whether you could just practice um, you know outside um, but do get their permission before you obviously do anything um, we're going to move on to the next so we're going to be talking about uh, the moving off routine now um, basically the moving off routine consists of three um, acronyms which is known as POM uh, the actual letter P stands for prepare your car so what you want to do is you want to clutch down, select first gear, and then slowly bring your left foot up until you can feel the biting point. Now the biting point is basically the point of where your car noise drops or your car starts to shake or judder. And your instructor will be able to elaborate more what the biting point actually means. Once you've done that, you want to move your right foot over to the gas. And in a petrol car, you will most likely need to give some gas or set the gas and make the engine that noise. In a diesel car, you don't actually really need to do that. Now, once you have done that, your car is now prepared to move off. Then we move over to the next letter, which is O, which stands for observation. So what you want to do is you want to check your center mirror, your left mirror, and then look over your left blind spot to make sure that there is no one there, any, you know, pedestrians or kids playing. Once you have done that, you move back to your center mirror and then you look to your right mirror and then you look over your right blind spot to see if you see any cyclists or motorcyclists that could be there. Once you have done that, you will give a right signal. Once you've given the right signal, you will then look over your blind spot again to make sure that there is no one that you have missed in your mirror. Once you have done that, then you are ready to move off.